Will Pokemon be featured in the Nintendo Direct? Welcome back to the Lumios Post. We talk about all things Pokemon, and today, got a little bonus video for you. Uh, low stakes, low editing, uh, not the main video of the week, but a video I wanted to put out there, and that, again, is addressing the question of if Pokemon Legends EA will be featured in the Nintendo Direct. For those who don't know, there is going to be a Nintendo Direct in the month of June. At the time of recording, it's 9.30 a.m. on June 17th, so maybe by the time I've posted this video, hopefully I'll have it up around 10, because uh, again, not really going to edit much here, just going to drop some music in and cut out the, the gritty parts, but at the time of recording, there has not been an official announcement of the date of the Direct. Literally mid-editing, uh, at 10 a.m., they announced it, so... It is happening tomorrow, 10 a.m. EST. However, there are some rumors right now circulating that could be as soon as tomorrow, which is wild. Uh, but we know there is one in June. We know this for a fact. Nintendo themselves announced that there will be a Nintendo Direct coming out in June. Now, there's some good arguments for and against Pokemon Legends EA dropping in a, a you know trailer in the Nintendo Direct. We're going to break it down as to why. I'm going to be kind of playing devil's advocate and talking about all the fours and all the against. So first off, we have not gotten a Pokemon Legends EA trailer since the reveal of it back on Pokemon Day in February. Now, this is a little odd for Pokemon. Uh, typically, we get a trailer in late May or early June. Uh, now, patterns are only patterns until they're broken, right? I always say this on this channel. They can always break a pattern. But there is is kind of just this pattern of getting news around then. With Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, we did not get a trailer in May or June, but we did in late May get the box arts of these games as well as the release dates of this game. And to be honest, I think like a lot of people, including myself, would take even that right now, especially because the box art of Legends Arceus had the starters on it. So hypothetically that could mean a starter reveal for Legends EA, and that would be amazing in itself. But we haven't gotten that yet, so the question would be, could Game Freak drop that? Now, that's not enough for a Nintendo Direct, I don't think. Uh, maybe it would be, you know, they can always do that, but that is a small amount. But yeah, uh, Pokemon does have a history of popping up in Nintendo Directs. Typically, back when E3 was a thing, rest in peace E3, uh, we would see Pokemon in these Nintendo Directs at E3. Things like the reveal of Nessa, the gym leader. Uh, then last year, they kind of still did a Nintendo Direct in June, even though there was no E3. And we did see the first gameplay footage of the Teal Mask and I think maybe even the Indigo Disc in that trailer so it, it was featured in the june nintendo direct so could it be featured here now a big against it is that legends ea isn't going to have the same marketing cycle as these past games not only because it's a different game but because it's releasing at a different time it is releasing next year in 2025 it's not releasing in november of this year like a lot of other games are and they've just said 2025 they didn't say early 2025 a lot of rumors are kind of saying that it won't be early 2025 you know legends arceus was in january of 2022 so you know th there was it, it was pretty much right after november right so it, it made sense to kind of keep its marketing cycle about the same but that's not the case for Legends EA if it is releasing later in the year. Now, the thing that kind of all of this revolves around is the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, so we don't know the official name of the Nintendo Switch 2. That's kind of just what people are calling. But we do know that there is a successor of the Switch in the works. Nintendo, in fact, the whole kind of revelation of the June Direct was kind of around this because they stated, hey, the Switch 2 successor will be announced before march 2025 before the end of march 2025 however we're just gonna go ahead and let you guys know there's gonna be a direct in june but we are not gonna talk about the switch 2 or the switch successor in that direct so there's not gonna be any mention of that but this is where we kind of get into some rumor territory but rumors that are pretty credible uh, i don't know how many of y'all are active in the nintendo sphere but there have been rumors of a Switch successor since like before COVID. And we always are getting some insiders or insiders say that, hey, the Switch is supposed to drop later this year. And then later this year comes along and guess what? No Switch 2. Oh, hey, it's supposed to be spring of next year. Spring comes along, no Switch 2. So, you know, we, we're seeing just multiple people say it's going to be now and then it's not now. And... 
that's led to a lot of speculation that this Switch 2, the Switch successor, has been delayed some. Now, the latest rumor suggests that this Switch 2, the Switch successor, was supposed to drop in fall of this year. This all comes from GameShark, a company that makes like Switch accessories, I guess. Uh, they were going to launch their Switch successor line in either August or September this year. Now, why would you launch a line for a product that is not even out yet? So the, the big theory here, the big rumor here, is that the Switch was supposed to drop in the fall, but it got delayed. Now, if that's the case, if the Switch successor was supposed to drop in the fall, but it got delayed, that means that probably most of Nintendo's fall games were meant to be launch titles for the Switch successor. And if the Switch successor got delayed, these games did too. They're not going to drop a game for a console in November when the console doesn't even come out until the next year. So that's to say that there probably aren't many Switch games left to cover. So what would the Nintendo Direct cover? Because we know it's not going to talk about the Switch 2. They said that. It's only going to cover Switch games. Well, Legend ZA, there's a pretty good chance that is the biggest game still left on the Switch. And I know some people are going to say, well, that might be for the Switch 2. And I really, I really disagree with that purely because they revealed it as a Switch game. They're not going to reveal it as a Switch game and then pull the rug out from under you and go, eh, no, it's for the Switch 2. It's at least going to be compatible with both. But either way, if it's compatible with both, it still is a Switch game, even if it's also a Switch 2 game. So again, that could be one of their biggest reveals is Legend ZA. And in fact, not only one of their biggest reveals, but one of their only reveals, if again, that Switch 2 was supposed to drop in the fall, meaning most games coming out this year, or Nintendo's biggest games at least, were supposed to debut alongside that. Now to play devil's advocate, we are seeing this kind of turn in the gaming industry where games are compatible on multiple consoles. Uh, I am not a PS player, but I heard that the PS5 actually has some games that are compatible for both the PS4 and the PS5. They just run better on the PS5, and maybe even they have some extra features on the PS5, I don't know. But either way, we could see something like this with the Switch 2, where there are some games that are uh, developed for both the Switch 2 and the Switch, and just will run better on the Switch 2 than they will the Switch, or maybe even have an extra feature. Like I proposed before, that Legend ZA, maybe they'll there's an NPC that'll be like, oh hey, you're playing this game on the Switch 2. Here's a Volcanion. I don't like handing out mythicals that way, but... Let's face it, that's not exactly outside of Game Freak's wheelhouse to do that, or the Pokemon Company's wheelhouse to just hand you a mythical. But either way, all this is just to illustrate that we we could see some games that could be on both consoles. And if that's the case, they could go ahead and reveal these games and just have the surprise reveal later on of, hey, you know that Mario game that we're dropping in November? Well, if you get it for the Switch 2 in March then or whenever the switch 2 comes out and they would reveal this at a later date then it'll run better the only thing is i just don't see them doing that because obviously the goal would be for you to buy the switch 2 the switch successor and if you already dropped the game in november and i'm a diehard mario fan i'm not but you know if i am then i'm gonna buy the mario game in november i don't want to wait till march when all these people are playing it. i'm seeing youtube videos on it i don't want to wait till march to buy it. i'm gonna go ahead and buy it in november and then what are the odds that i'm going to buy it in november and then buy it again for the switch 2 in march you know or, or play it again in march you know so i just i don't really see them doing games that are compatible with the switch and the switch 2 releasing those before the switch 2 is even out i don't see them doing that so again it all comes back to legend ZA could be the biggest reveal for nintendo and so you'd think they'd want that in their nintendo direct now again there is the fact that the reveals for the next legend ZA trailer would probably be pretty big we haven't gotten gameplay footage so it's very likely the next trailer would have gameplay footage it's very likely the next trailer would reveal the starter lineup for these games. Now, for those who don't know, Legends Arceus gave us a mixed batch of starters. We don't know that Legends EA will do this, but it could. That's definitely something that people are really excited for. And it would also reveal the release date. Game Freak has never given that information for Nintendo to reveal. They've always liked to reveal that on their own in their own Pokemon Presents. So it's a question of would they let Nintendo give us the release date? of a Pokemon game, the starters of a Pokemon game, 
and honestly, even the gameplay footage. Sure, they gave us the gameplay footage of the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc, but those were games that were on Scarlet and Violet. It was just DLC. It wasn't even a new game. So that wasn't a crazy reveal. It was just kind of cool to see the world of Kitakami and the world of the Blueberry Academy in the Switch engine, but we already knew what that engine looked like. We already knew the graphics and gameplay or whatever, you know? So it wasn't as crazy as the Legend ZA gameplay footage will be. We don't know the art direction of that game. We don't know the kind of gameplay features of that game. Like, we are told it's an action RPG, but we don't even know if Pokemon will attack you. You can throw Pokeballs without, you know, battling the Pokemon. All those things. We don't know those things. So pretty much any reveal right now is a big reveal especially since there's only one legends game to compare to so there's not even enough to guaranteed say well this isn't a legends game so we'll be in this legends game there's not even enough to say that the time period that's another thing seeing gameplay footage would probably give us a better idea of the time period this is set in which would also be a big thing fans are looking forward to so it's a question of would Game Freak be willing to let Nintendo reveal that now they haven't in the past but they always could in the future you know, Game Freak is partners with Nintendo. Both are owners of the Pokemon company. So, you know, the, Game Freak doesn't have all the weight in the decisions, right? But Nintendo doesn't either. So it's just a question of what's going on between those two. It, would Game Freak be cool with letting them do that? Will Game Freak put up a fight to not let them do that? Will Game Freak lose that fight to not let them do that? There's so many questions there. Uh, we, and it's it's just a big mystery we we don't really know what that would look like because it's never been done before but that doesn't mean it can't ever be done another thing i will talk about is that there currently is a, a big push of promotion for legend za right now uh, the japanese pokemon twitter the official um japanese pokemon twitter has changed their banner to be legend za themed and also have pinned the legends trailer to the top of their page. So when you go to their Twitter, the first tweet you see, the pinned tweet, is the Legend ZA trailer. This wasn't the case when the trailer was revealed. They only did this like within the last month. Then also you do have in Japan the uh, Pokemon X and Y Pokemon Fit plushes, or the Sitting Cuties as they're called over here in the West. Uh, now, for this, they've kind of done a big promotion. They've not only revealed the Pokemon X and Y uh, Sitting Cuties or Pokemon Fit plushes, but they've also themed a pop-up Pokemon X and Y themed shop in the Pokemon centers in Japan, which are the Pokemon stores in Japan, as well as brought some Pokemon X and Y themed stuff like lattes to the Pokemon cafe, the little restaurants they have over in Japan. Now, I will say in the past, they did this for Unova. They did this for Sinnoh. They did this. This isn't unusual for them. They like to do those pop-up shops, but the timing is interesting combined with the Legend ZA reveal, right? Like, or the Legend ZA stuff going on on the Twitter, them putting it in the banner, them pinning the tweet, and then unveiling the X and Y theme plushes. I mean, surely Nintendo has to know, or Pokemon has to know that these plushies are very tied to Legend ZA because Legend ZA is set in Lumio City in the Kalos region, the same region Pokemon X and Y are around. It would make sense to reveal this plush lineup and release this plush lineup on the height of news so they can ride the wave of news hype, you know, as we're seeing more of these Pokemon, people are falling in love with them again and buying them more. The timing of it is weird. It also, they waited longer between Sinnoh and Unova they, they waited longer between Unova and Kalos, rather, than they did Sinnoh and Unova. So it's like they waited for the right moment to reveal this, which is very interesting in itself. But who knows whether or not Pokemon Legends EA will be in the Nintendo Direct. We don't know yet, but we will know pretty soon. I mean, if it's in June, guys, it is guaranteed going to be by next week, the Nintendo Direct. So uh, let me know in the comments if you think Legends EA will be featured. Also, let me know in the comments what you're excited to see for in the Nintendo Direct. You know, what are some things you're hoping will be revealed, Pokemon or non-Pokemon, you know? I, I think the only thing Pokemon would be the Legends EA thing. So let me know, uh, are you wanting a Breath of the Wild or rather Tears of the Kingdom DLC or are you wanting, you know, something else? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications because then I know y'all like these little bonus videos when we're kind of approaching news, and I'll do more of them in the future. Again, I know it's low editing, not really having any pictures or anything. Wanted to get this out because it's just kind of an informational conversation video. I uh, didn't feel that I should take the time to long-form edit this video and uh, 
put it out there later. I, I think this is more important to get out now. Liking the video shows me I made the right decision. So please do that as well as subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications, all that stuff. And until next time, I'll see all of you later.